Hi, I saw an interesting problem on Experts Exchange recently and I thought we'd use the problem to just demonstrate what we could do with Process Monitor to address this particular problem. So the problem is that a file on a share is deleted by a user but sometime later the file reappears and we can't find what's restoring the file. So what I'm going to do is use Process Monitor to try and discover what actually is recreating this file. So I have this set up, a Windows 7 machine and a, a Windows 2008 R2 server. On the server I have a share called test and on that share I'm going to create a file called reappearing.txt and we're just going to play with that file to, uh, to demonstrate what we can do with Process Monitor. So I have Process Monitor running on the file server. Now this can sound a bit frightening because Process Monitor can generate an awful lot of data but uh, there is a way of limiting the amount of data to give us just what we need and to just create quite small amounts of data. So here's the file server and I have a process monitor running here. I want to show you the particular filter settings I have. By default, I wouldn't have these three settings here and this setting here would be ticked. So those are the only changes I've made. I've added three settings and I've unchecked this particular setting. So let me explain. I've unchecked this setting because this would exclude all system events and I want some system events which we'll see later why, why I want them. So I can either remove that, uh, that rule completely by highlighting it and clicking on remove or I can simply untick it which is what I've done. And then I've added an include for the path operation that actually looks for the file that I'm interested in tracking. In fact, I've got begins with, but I can just say is there. And then I've got uh, close operations and create operations. The create operation will both create a new file and will open exi an existing file. So we'll see the difference between those two in a second. So those are my filter expressions. Now the very important thing that I've also got set is it under the filter menu item I've got this setting here drop filtered events. Now if I didn't have that setting even though the display in process monitor would just show me the events that obey my filter I would actually be capturing all events in the background and that's what would generate vast amounts of data. But by setting this I only capture events that actually meet my filter criteria. So that's how I'm limiting the amount of uh, data I'm capturing. So I've already got it running. Um, so it's capturing right now. Now let's actually create the file. I'm just going to uh, use a very simple command. So I'm just listing this directory and pumping the output into uh, the file. So let's do that. And here we see that we now have created the file just here and if I look if I double click on it it says disposition overwrite if and what that means is if there was an existing file it would overwrite it otherwise it will create a new one now that's all worked okay but what we also noticed was these two entries here under the system entry let's have a look at that now in this case the desired access is read and the disposition is open so all we want to do is open this file for purposes of reading. But what's interesting is it says impersonating advanced 7 Fred B. Now here on the file server itself I'm actually just logged in as administrator within the advanced 7 domain. Fred B is another user and in fact Fred B is the user on the Windows 7 machine that I showed you. So let's go and have a look at that machine. Here's the, uh, the actual share and here's the file as it's appeared on that share. 
just ignore this one for the moment just just concentrate on this and the reason that I see a read operation on the file server is because it just wants to check the attributes of the um, the file so that it can display the file here in Windows Explorer okay so that looks good so now we understand what that's doing so let's just delete the file Now delete is a really strange thing because there is no actual delete command. What you do when you want to delete a file as far as the uh, Win32 API is concerned is you open the file but you open it with desired access of de read attributes and delete. And what that means is as soon as you close the file after this open it will delete the file. So in fact it's this close that deletes the file. It's a bit bizarre, <laughs> but that's how it works. Okay, so we've deleted the file. Now of course this might be the situation that we were in where the file has been correctly deleted and everything's okay and we can't uh, and and we're happy until the file suddenly reappears. So let's cause the file to reappear by doing something on this other machine. So I'm just going to uh, copy over the file again, which I'd saved on the documents uh, folder of this machine. I'm just going to copy it over to here. So that's on the client machine. Now we go back to the server, and now we can see we have more events. So disposition, create. So here we're recreating that file, reopening it again and um, then we, we open it for purposes of reading attributes. The close command, you see that there's sometimes delays between the, uh, the creates and the close commands. This is to do with opportunistic locking, or um, actually on this release of uh, Windows, it's called um, leasing. I can't cover that here it's gonna it would take us too long so uh, if you want to know about leasing just have a look on the advanced 7 website and there's a white paper on SMB operation and there's all sorts of detail in there about leasing anyway the point is that we've now found that this file has been recreated by this user um, now if that wasn't enough to find the culprit the thing that was recreating the, the problem in the real scenario, we might have to also run a network trace to actually see which machine this had come from, but hopefully the account information would be enough. There's one further question that we have to answer, and that is um, what happens if the file is created by a process that's actually running on the file server rather than a process running on a remote device, a remote system. So I'm just going to use a notepad here to create the file. So here we go, just stick some text in there. Let's save it. I'll save it into the uh, test directory, which is, sorry, that's where the share, the share is of, of this directory on the uh, local um, C drive. And We have to put in the correct correct name of the file, otherwise it won't work. And here we go. So let's have a look what we have here. So this is where Notepad is checking to see if the file already exists by the looks of things because it's doing an open and it's got name not found. It's doing it again. It's done it again a third time. Okay. And here, create file, success, disposition, create. So this is the point where Notepad actually recreated that file. So um, what you would expect is that uh, if it were a process that were recreating this file, then you'd have the name of the process here instead of having system, as you've got down here. This uh, system down here is, again, my remote PC updating its um, directory view by opening the file to see what the attributes are of the file. So that's it. I hope that helps. 
and uh, hope to uh, speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.